That's better. There you go. You do uh, warmly welcome you in here to uh, St. Leonard's. And this is our first Sunday back as a, a weekly. It feels as though we're kind of starting to get back to some sort of normality, whatever normality is when you have me as a rector, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but we, we do welcome you and we, we look forward to our worship uh, together. So I don't think we've got anybody joining us on Zoom today. Do we enjoy Zoom? Yeah. All right. Oh, well. Anyway, we're, we're doing a, a worship survey at the moment, which is just trying to reflect back over the last 18 months uh, about how people felt our worships went online uh, and, you know, was there anything good about it, anything you enjoyed, anything that we could keep, uh, what could we throw away, uh, and then that question, should we continue? Uh, of course, if nobody signs up and joins in, then you might wonder why we continue. <laughs> uh, but there is a actual copy of the survey at the back if you haven't had a chance to fill it in. Uh, Tom's displaying it beautifully at the moment. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there is a, the, the online one uh, is in the link uh, if you receive our uh, weekly emails. So shall we begin our worship for today? Let us be still. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn, the church is one foundation, it is Jesus Christ our Lord.
presence of the Lord. Let us <laughs> so as we gather in the presence of the Lord, let us confess our sins with penitence and with faith. We sit as we turn to a time of confession. Father, we acknowledge that we have not love as you would have us love. We turn to you again and ask for your mercy. Forgive us and renew us through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray the collect for this day. Almighty God, your son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living bread, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear a reading for today. Chris comes to read for us. <coughs> A reading from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 16. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Lord, as we turn again to your word, help us to feed upon it, to receive from it, and to be encouraged and equipped to know that we are your children, ambassadors of Christ in our communities to the glory of your name. Amen. Microphone? It's on. One, two, three, four. Can you hear me? Wow. 
one faith, one hope, one Lord, one baptism. The statement that we find uh, in Paul's letter to the Ephesians is a, an early uh, credo statement, in one of the earliest teachings of, of the church as it becomes to, to be formed. We remember that Paul uh, founded the, the church in Ephesus probably around about AD 52-ish, and about then he spends a few years with them, uh, and then he goes off on his further journeys around, uh, and then later he's um, taken to Rome and imprisoned, and it's from there that he writes his prison letters, his letters of Ephesians and Galatians and the others that he wants to care for the church like a father caring for his children. He wants to equip them and help them to, to grow up in the faith, to become mature as believers. If you were with us last week or caught up online, then last week we told you that Ephesians is split into two main clear sections, chapters 1 to 3 and chapters 4 to 6, easy as that. Uh, and last week we looked a bit about these first few chapters being Paul outlines the fact that of, of the gospel, what the gospel does for us. At once we were outsiders, we were outside of God's great family, but through the work of Christ, we are brought in to be family members. We are children of God, brothers and sisters with Christ. And he basically is saying that, you know, we're in this great family that we are loved, that we have a purpose and a reason for being. Whereas once before we had no purpose, no reason for life. But in Christ, we are brought together to live to his praise and glory and to make him known. And then we ask that simple question, so what? And I kind of said, well, that leads you on to the next sermon, which is where we are today. It's nice when sermons fall on from one another. Already done the background reading. There we go. So today we come to this beautiful passage. Paul reminds them that he is still a prisoner of the Lord, and he starts from that position as a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you then to live a life worthy of your calling, the calling that you have received. So he's basically beginning to answer that so what question. If Christ has done this for us, if we've been brought into this family where we are loved and accepted by God and we receive those gifts, then how should we respond? How should we live as Christians today? And Paul begins by basically saying, it's not easy. For some, it might mean being in prison. It might mean being persecuted. It's not easy. But Paul urges us to live a life worthy of the calling encourages us to do this by being completely humble, gentle, patient, and bearing with one another in love. And as I said in these other prison letters, the, the letter of Galatians especially, in Galatians 5, he unpacks that a little bit more, that we have to live as people of the Spirit, people of the fruit of the Spirit, growing as people of love, of patience, of kindness and goodness. And here in Ephesians, he continues to tell us to make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. For there is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called to one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. 
I say that uh, becomes, as we have said, one of the earliest credo statements of the church. So as a church, we believe in one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one hope, called into this one family. There are different parts of the family. We, ex we acknowledge that. We acknowledge that we're not a perfect family. And therefore, Paul says, bear with one another, put up with one another. And it's hard. He wants us to live a life worthy of our calling, to be Christians, to be children of God. And for me, that takes place in three different spheres. There's a personal, private sphere. There's a public sphere. But there's also the church, the fellowship. How do I act personally and privately? Should be worthy of Christ. We all probably have secrets that we're ashamed of, things that we do when we know we've failed. But do we turn to Christ? Do we come to Him as disciples wanting to grow? The question to ask might be, how is your prayer life? How is your study life? Do you have that relationship with God? Speaking to uh, John, as many of you know, John is currently in hospital. And he says one of the things that's keeping him going is that he's praying more. He feels closer to God. We don't have the, the big answers. The why answers can't be answered. But that the fact that he's got this relationship with God is keeping him going. He feels at peace that God is with him through the storm. He has that personal relationship. There's also a public life. How do we live out to be public Christians? There are brothers and sisters we remember who are being persecuted because they stand up for their faith. How do we act in our community, in our workplace, in our shops, at the social club, but even on social media? That's what we do and say. Reflect Christ to the world. Are we ambassadors of the church? And thirdly, there's that life within the fellowship. Paul reminds us that we are part of a great body. We have to be humble and gentle with one another, making every effort to live in unity with one another through the bond of peace also to encourage one another to grow in faith. Jesus often would take a child, it seems, as we read in the gospel, and place the child in front of the disciples as a teaching metaphor. So imagine a child in front of you, part of the family, loved by the family, but we would be concerned if we didn't see that child grow and develop. As we watch our little children grow and grow and grow and head off to universities and other places, become at times their own family. They mature, they develop, and we bless them for that. We bless them for the, the joys of the past when we remember them in Sunday school. Oh, do you remember? Do you remember? Jaren running around? So you've got the right name. You'd be surprised it only took you 15 years. <laughs> you remember Ella and you? Remember Chris trying to teach you and you're like doodling all your bits of paper. 
I remember being bored sometimes and other times saying, now this is fun. That's life. There are times that are boring and there are times that are fun. And they grow up and we want to bless you guys. Because I know, you know some of you are going on to work in life now. I don't mind you, this, you've been there, but some of you are just starting that new journey. We want to bless you and I think it's great. But each of us are like that little child. Each of us are called to grow and mature in our Christian faith and life. And if we're not growing and maturing, we should be concerned. Seven days without food makes one week. Oh, it does, doesn't it? In more than one way. I'm dyslexic, so I can go anyway. <laughs> and it's the same in our faith journey. We need to feed, we need to grow both personally in our walk with Christ, but also as a fellowship, so that when we're out in that community, we are ambassadors for Christ, declaring our faith in one hope and one Lord. Amen. I know I'm going to embarrass you. Is that okay? Could you come and join me? It's been a pleasure. Uh, as I say, to, watching our young people grow up and develop. Uh, and Isla, uh, over the last couple of years, has been helping us serve here. Uh, and she's now about to be a little fledgling and fly off. Where are you off to? So she's going to Aberdeen, that big grey, dull, yuck city, you know. Don't you want to come this way? You have to turn around and face us. She's already embarrassed I've pulled her up here. <laughs> anyway, as a fellowship, we wanted to, to bless you and send you on your way into this new chapter with our blessings and uh, a little gift. Uh, and we hope you'll enjoy your time in Aberdeen. You doing anything? Uh, oil working? Um, uh, wind turbines? They're doing that in Aberdeen now. No? No? no what are you doing? Midwifery. Oh, there you go. Yeah. The nannies in the future. <laughs> so, dirty nappies, all that sort of stuff, or just a yurt of uh, the... <laughs> It's a messy job you've taken on. I've been there twice. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also a, a job full of so much blessing and, and excitement. Uh, so we bless you as you, you take on that new commitment. Go and enjoy. And let us know how you're doing. <laughs> Shall we turn to a time of prayer as we invite Neil to come and to lead us in our prayers at this time? Let us pray. Holy God, make us receptive and open as we lay our intercessions before you this morning. May we accept your kingdom like children taking bread from the hands of their father or mother. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for our minute our ministry team working faithfully to lead us here at St. Leonard's and also at our sister church, St. Mary's, and we know that you work through them. May they always be aware of the blessings that you bestow upon them, strengthen and uphold them 
when they grow weary in their ministries. Constantly remind us all that you who began all good work in us will ultimately perfect it through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for your whole creation, for our brothers and sisters across the world, and for their lives to be respected and revered, regardless of creed or colour, gender or sexuality, wealth or status, and for a responsible sharing of precious resources and the conservation of a fragile and beautiful world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we prepare to eat our food each day, we pray for those who grow and manufacture it, distribute and sell it, shop for it and cook it, and for those with whom we share food. Build us up, Lord, with your spiritual feeding, which sustains us evermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we give thanks for our homes and for all who care for us. And we pray for our friends and our loved ones. We remember our local community, its schools and its places of work. May all reflect your glory and your love. And let us always be aware of any who are lonely or feel rejected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask that you bring healing to all who are unwell in mind, body, and spirit, and that you would shed light wherever there is darkness. Hear us now, Lord, as we bring before you all those known to us who need healing prayer at this time. And Lord, we remember especially this morning, John Mellon and Norma Hornell. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we thank you for those who have traveled before us on the way of the cross and are now at peace in your eternal presence. Help us to live always mindful of your promise to us that the road of faith will lead into your heavenly kingdom. And Lord, we remember especially those from our own church community whose anniversaries fall at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, fill our hunger with the food that lasts, the bread of God, which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand together if you're able. We hope you're enjoying the cushions being back. We are to continue in unity by the bond of peace that Christ brings us in to one family. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. Peace to you.
as we come to the family table to gather round the table to know that all are welcome here. We remember that Jesus stands among us as we sing our next song. Which may have a dodgy beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. At supper with his friends, we remember that Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke the bread and he gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. So by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, we worship together as one body 
and we offer up our sacrifice of praise as we lift our voices to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of his glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Come, Holy Spirit, come upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by your life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of our Lord, and that we may be kindled by the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Amen. I think I've missed a bit. Have I? Let us pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Cry. 
world might be restored. The world might be restored. Offering now the lives we live. Freely you gave and freely we will give. Freely we will give. Let us pray the prayer after communion. God of unity and love, who has called us to be one body through the resurrection of your Son, help us by the empowering of the Holy Spirit to confess that there is one faith, one hope, one Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and among you and remain with you always. Amen. We began by singing the song the Christ is our foundation and as we go into this week we end by reminding ourselves that it is by God that we are guided to be one church one faith one Lord by hand O oh God has guided church without notices. Um, just to remind you that the Labyrinth Cafe uh, being uh, hosted uh, by Sandy Ann uh, is taking place next Saturday 
than at St. Mary's. Uh, there's a, a good number signed up, but there's still space uh, for, for those who, who wish to come. If you don't know what a labyrinth is, uh, maybe you could take on board some of the sermon about how you, how you live your life, uh, how you engage with God. And the labyrinth is one of those tools that we can use to meet with the divine and to, to, to pray, to bring our concerns, to encounter God, uh, and then to be affirmed and hopefully again sent out into the world. So come uh, and learn how you could use uh, a labyrinth to speak to San Dian, uh, sign up. Uh, I enjoyed the, the, the day we had here. There was also a nice meal with it as well, which made it even better. <laughs> so uh, I don't know of any other notices that we outlined. Um, as a church, as we begin to, to, to reopen, we, we acknowledge uh, again our, our, our need to, to work as a family. Uh, and if you're able to, to help us in the, the, the running of the services with being able to read the lessons or bring prayers or intercessions, or maybe you want to preach, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> do, do sign up, I believe. There's also a sign up sheet going around. Uh, uh, and that's that'd be good because we work as one body uh, together, many parts together. Uh, so, and our hope is that hopefully, maybe by September, once we've worked out the rules and regulations, we'll be able to uh, enjoy a cup and some fellowship together. Uh, and by then, we'll be able to do cake again. Although I don't think I'm allowed any more cake. So, cool people. I would wish to say it's time for coffee. I could do you one. <laughs> do fellowship for a time uh, outdoors uh, as we go from this place into the community around us to be ambassadors for Christ, people of the one church, one faith, one Lord. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.